Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome here with me, uh, Nigel Click, owner of Value Exchange Experts in LinkedIn. Good morning, Nigel. Good morning. Hi. So can you please introduce yourself and your training courses? Sure. Um, my name is Nigel Cliff. I run a business called Value Exchange. Um, I've uh, set up Value Exchange in 2013, uh, and pretty much since that time, I've done LinkedIn training full time. Uh, what I do, I help people become LinkedIn credible. Um, pretty much every business professional has a LinkedIn profile. So a few of them uh, maximize it to the extent that they could. Uh, so I take them on that journey of, of learning and understanding to help them achieve their goals on LinkedIn. Uh, often that's uh, in the area of uh, lead generation, creating new conversations to get into uh, into new business opportunities. Uh, we'll say 95% of the time that's the case. Uh, and I help them on that journey. Excellent. Well, how can companies generate more business out of LinkedIn? Um, companies have to re rely on their, their staff to be ambassadors of their brand. So this is a really important facet of, of, of LinkedIn that many businesses uh, don't fully understand. Um, people engage with people. You know, we, we, are, we are gregarious individuals. We have relationships. We can have conversations. Uh, you can't technically do that with a company. You can't have a conversation with a company. So in terms of company uh, getting their voice, their brand, uh, their message out to the audience, that is best done by creating ambassadorship, shall we call it, of their audience through their, through their staff members, particularly through, through those that have uh, customer-facing responsibilities. So it's really important for companies not to rely purely on orchestrating content through the company page because that gets no engagement. Uh, typically, the number of followers on a company page are, are relatively small. Uh, there's not a lot of, not of good analytics around uh, who those uh, followers are. So in fact, you know, you're probably pushing your content into a vacuum. Uh, we sometimes say in, in Yorkshire, it's probably gone into a bushel and the bushel's got a lid on it. Uh, so you're far better to actually turn ambassadorship of your, your, your key employees into being competent engagers uh, on the platform in order to help you drive those conversations that lead to new business. I, I completely agree. Well, sales and marketing, in my humble opinion, they're actually usually misinterpreted. I believe in th that they should be considered as two quite distinctive uh, topics. Well, how does LinkedIn differentiate between sales and marketing? I think uh, sales and marketing has become a, a, a it's interesting, isn't it? The world of digital communications, I think, has changed the, the concept and that sometimes separate nature of sales and marketing. You know, I really think they're one and the same thing. Uh, both have a responsibility uh, to get the brand and uh, the benefits of their products or services out to a client audience. Uh, and really, the two in my mind should be totally, totally integrated. You know, one is supporting the other to get into those conversations. Uh, you know, it really should never have been thought of as a separate entity. Uh, you know, they, they should be combined in my, in, in, in my world. Um, and I think on the platform of LinkedIn, they become one and the same thing. You know, my, one, let, let me say this, uh, you shouldn't ever sell on LinkedIn. Okay. How, how, how do you mean, Nigel? You just talked about it as a lead generation platform. Absolutely. But you never sell on LinkedIn. So how does that, how does that fathom? Okay. What we do is we create presence. We create trust in our personal brands. Uh, we build integrity with, with our audience, with our tribe, uh, and we provide knowledge and benefits to the audience around us. That, when done well, means that people of the right type want to be our friends, want to be in contact with us, want what we've got. So if we do this in a way that's adding value to that relationship, we're dropping you know, something into that relationship of value on a constant and, and, and uh, regular basis, consistency is a big issue, um, then we will get into those conversations. And what we should never do is actually hit the selling button because the minute we come at an audience trying to sell on LinkedIn, we just turn the audience off completely. So the, the concept of sales and marketing is an interesting one in that concept because we don't sell on LinkedIn. In, in a way, it's all kind of marketing, but, but with a sales effort at, at, at the lead of it. Uh, you know, the, Obviously, the intent is to get into those conversations that will turn into business, but there is no buy button on LinkedIn. You know, It's not Amazon. You can't purchase anything. You're not going to sell your goods on LinkedIn. So what you really must do is, is use LinkedIn as a, a vehicle to get into the conversation 
that's then going to be taken somewhere else over coffee, hopefully in the near future, uh, you know, on a Zoom call such as this one, Andrea, uh, you know, or, or, or whatever. But it isn't going to be the deal's not going to be clinched on LinkedIn. So don't try and clinch it there. You know, that it's a place to get into the conversation, which will allow be taken somewhere else. So that's my perspective on that sales and marketing question that, that you raise. Um, I, I completely agree. Marketing, especially on LinkedIn, is a fantastic door opener. And then afterwards, you go get the sale. Absolutely. Absolutely. How do you see LinkedIn evolving in the next uh, few years? And how can companies uh, potentially tap into this uh, amazing business opportunity? Well, I would say this wouldn't have, but so few companies really understand uh, fully the power of LinkedIn as a platform. I mean, increasingly they are, and especially so. I think that's had a, a, an effective boost of, of perception of value in the last 12 months, of course, uh, and as people have been you know, locked down, working from home, uh, not able to go meet people, have meetings, then, uh, you know, having a, an online, a digital presence uh, is become a key feature of, of any uh, business development role. Um, so I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an increasing awareness of the power of LinkedIn and digital uh, communication. Uh, and therefore, companies are beginning to be more enlightened about the fact that, you know, they shouldn't see this LinkedIn as a... As, in an old fashioned view is a place where if I make my staff better on LinkedIn, they're just going to go and get another job. That's that's a ridiculously old fashioned sort of uh, mindset. Um, the potential to turn all your staff into ambassadors for your brand is, is a huge, huge opportunity to get the, the message and the voice of that company out to a wide and wide audience. You know, every, every, each one of us have got multiple connections in, in all different worlds. So imagine the voice of, uh, of your product or service being ad, uh, portrayed through adding value going out to thousands and thousands of people, uh, then the power of that is just immense. So I do see companies, you know, over a period of time, be increasingly beginning to wake up to the reality of the value of social media, business to business relationships. Uh, and, and without doubt, LinkedIn is, you know, like it or not, the, the, the preeminent platform, you know, for that. Um, not to say that other social media platforms don't have a place, depending on your product type, but in a business to business environment, LinkedIn is, is, is clearly the one. Now, there's another perception, another sort of um, issue that's kind of happening on, on LinkedIn. And it, it's one of increased personality, increased personalization, uh, increased, um, shall I use even the word vulnerability? So it's not all about hard-nosed business, you know, I'm here to sell you something, I'm here to have a conversation. Um, actually, what you're finding increasingly is that to be a human being on LinkedIn is, is the thing which is going to raise your profile beyond that of others. And it's, it, it, it's an interesting and very fine line to walk, isn't it? Um, you know, we, we, we don't want LinkedIn to become Facebook. Uh, you know, of course we don't. Uh, and it will always be a business to business platform. But that doesn't mean to say that individuals can't have personality on there. And I think we're gonna see an increasing uh, likelihood of, of the platform um, moving towards that personal uh, lifestyle you know, uh, issues around mental health being, you know, preeminent as, as, as they already are, but an increasingly amount so. Uh, so that's actually, you know, when we're buying into a brand through a person, because people buy people first, um, we engage as individuals. And as individuals, we have lives, we have challenges, we have things to overcome. Uh, you know, we, 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 we've got joy in our lives and we share that. And, you know, we've got sadness in our lives and we should be prepared to, uh, to share that too. So I think um, this ability to, to have a, a true personality on LinkedIn, I think is going to be an ever increasing factor of a successful uh, strategy, shall we say, uh, for winning an audience's favour to get into those conversations, which might just very well change your business life. Fantastic. Well, that was amazing. Thank you very much, Nigel. And if you have any questions or need any assistance with LinkedIn, please contact Nigel uh, at Value Exchange. He'll be able to help you out. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed.